Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. After a case that's dragged on for years, the family of Zion Foster gets a measure of justice. Defendants cold, indifference, and self-observed conduct leading up to Zion Foster's death through today made it clear that he's unlikely that he can be rehabilitated. Zion Foster's cousin, Jalen Brazier, is going to spend the next 38 to 90 years in prison for her murder. At the sentencing today, Jalen Brazier continued to maintain his innocence, saying he did not kill Zion Foster. But he did say he took responsibility for the pain he's caused the family. Sean Lay has followed this story ever since Foster disappeared in January of 2022. Sean, I understand it got emotional in that courtroom. It's emotional all the time with the Zion Foster case, Kimberly and Devin. Let me take everyone right inside the courtroom right away. Jalen Brazier, the defendant here, trying to have the last word by calling himself a victim, just like Zion Foster. Zion was not in any way violently. That wasn't her at all. I never would have. Yes, we were close. There was nothing sexual about We were both victims of the very same situation. Jalen Brazier telling the court he is a victim the same as his cousin Zion Foster. Brazier is convicted of killing Zion and dumping her body in a dumpster. The judge saying Brazier has never taken responsibility for what he did to Zion and her family. The director of the pre-sentence investigation report was asked whether there was any statement he'd like to have noted in his report. He said, I didn't murder her, but the jury found me guilty. Well, I'm not surprised that the defendant continues to deny his role in the victim's death. His response reveals that he's incapable of accepting responsibility of the suffering he's covered Zion, uh, caused Zion Foster's family. The final word going to Zion's mother revealing the nightmare at times left her and her family homeless. When we've ended up without housing because I couldn't make it to work, because I couldn't function, because of breaking down. Sierra Milton, Zion Foster's mother, on Zoom there in court. She was here for all of the trial and for the verdict. However, she moved out of the area, guys. She's uh, in her home state now, no longer homeless or having those challenges right at the moment as far as you know, all the emotions that she's had to deal with while she was here. Too painful for her to remain here, so they moved out of state. You mentioned 38 to 90 years. That's on the second-degree murder charge. Tack on 10 more years for uh, disturbing of evidence or you know, abusing that evidence at Zion's body, which has never been found. 100 years total if Brazier serves the max. 100. Back to you guys. Yeah. Okay. Sean, thank you. A law firm owned by University of Michigan Regent was covered with pro Palestinian graffiti overnight. The vandalism coming after police dismantled that protester encampment on the university's campus a few weeks ago. Will Jones heard from police and from Jordan Acker, who is calling it an anti Semitic attack. Before all of this gets cleaned up, we want to show you what vandals did overnight at Goodman Acker Law Firm in Southfield. But we have to be careful about what we show because of some of the language. But you can see red paint scattered about. And some of the messages include free Palestine, divest now, and UM kills. And this is likely why vandals targeted this law firm. Under the cover of darkness, surveillance video capturing the vandals in action at the Goodman Acker Law Firm in Southfield around 1.45 this morning. Southfield police calling this a hate crime. Jordan Acker is a partner at this law firm. He also sits on the University of Michigan Board of Regents, and that adds context to the messages vandals left behind at his law office. This has nothing to do with Palestine or the war in Gaza or anything else. This is done as a message to scare Jews. Last month, University of Michigan police cleared a month long protest encampment on campus. Demonstrators calling for the university to divest from Israel. This is the second time Acker has been targeted. On May 15th, Acker posted on X about someone leaving a list of demands at his home, including defunding the police. That same day, University of Michigan officials sending out a statement about incidents at the homes of regents. This is a significant escalation. Now, just to be clear, going to my colleagues' homes, all of us, is unacceptable and dangerous. But singling out a Jewish board member is anti-Semitism, pure and simple. We're concerned, and we're going to, again, use our resources to identify the suspects involved. Again, Southfield police are investigating this incident as a hate crime. They say they're getting the FBI involved. They want to send a strong message that this type of behavior won't be tolerated here. From Southfield, Will Jones, Local 4.
All right, Will, uh, Acker added today that his law firm is owned by not only Jews, but also Muslims and Christians. University of Michigan said there were no other incidents involving regents overnight. All right, take a live look at the Michigan Central Station. It's pretty quiet there right now, but come Thursday, it'll be a whole different story. Ford is bringing in a list of all-star performers to help open the building in style. Mara McDonald is live on this story tonight. Mara, there are some very big names on that list. Kimberly, it is amazing. You've got to take a look at this, though. Take a walk with me. Look at what, I mean, they're essentially building a small city out in front of the train station. Uh, the concert venue here is going to be incredible. And when you see the totality of the list of those names, I mean, wow. Take a look. Tickets for the grand opening of the train station and the concert blew out the door in minutes. Now, all that said, you're going to be able to see the whole thing live on Local 4 on Thursday. You have got to see the entirety of this lineup. The whole shebang is being produced by Eminem. And while the whole thing is full of headliners, this is not a drill. Diana Ross is coming. I've been singing Love Child all day. Anyway, there's more top-tier talent across multiple genres. We've got a first look inside the train station, which is simply spectacular today. Maloney is going to show us everything inside at 530. And when I say we're showing you the whole concert, we are including a special right before. Our coverage starts at 7 o'clock on Thursday, and that's across all our channels, including TV, Click On, as well as streaming on Local 4+. Plus. Back here alive, you can see how fast they are putting this up out here and how much work has gone into this. And I tell you, Kimberly and Devin, when you think of the amount of money, time, effort, and care that has gone into rehabilitating this building, it is awe inspiring. And then you see what they're doing for this concert. I I mean, I think this is going to be one of those defining things where people are going to say, well, I was there for the concert or I saw this. And the reality is everybody's going to get a chance to see it because we're going to have it on Local 4. And if I don't hear Diana Ross say, <laughs> just remember what I told you, the day I set you free. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> it's going to be I cannot great. wait. Yeah. It, <laughs> Back to you guys. Yes, it's going to be great. And you have to think, too, that Eminem, he's, he can't just produce it. He's going to have to perform, too, right? Oh, you think? I mean, I, 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 I mean, <laughs> of course. Like, there's no, I, I'm like, pr produce. Okay, we're producing this. You know he's going to be out there <laughs> singing Lose Yourself and a whole bunch of other stuff. And people are going to lose their minds. This is, this is incredible indeed indeed and like you said wait until maloney shows us the inside it's absolutely <laughs> breathtaking all right mar we'll check in with you later thank you so much what a week no, <laughs> i know eminem does have a new album exactly you've got to think all right we are set to see a warm up as we head to the middle of the week <laughs> let's get over to ron hilliard he's in for kim adams tonight hi ron hey how's it going you know arms are heavy and you know it's uh gonna be <laughs> that's a Eminem reference. <laughs> We're looking at some rain showers over <laughs> to the west. Wisconsin, they've had the rain, some thunderstorms moving across Lake Michigan, and they'll begin into our area as we get into the overnight hours. When it comes to the warmth, it has been warm out there, but it is going to be downright hot tomorrow. We have those temperatures at 74 in Mount Clemens, 78 in Howell. And then as we look at what we can expect for the rest of this evening, it doesn't offer much relief with these temperatures only getting down into the upper 60s as we get toward midnight, a little bit cooler overnight. Now, I'm going to talk about the oppressive conditions that we're going to have. The heat and the humidity going up tomorrow. We'll be seeing that humidity still with us on Wednesday. We'll talk more about that coming up. All right, Ron. Now, we are doing something we've never done before. 24 hours in Highland Park, live every hour, kind of giving you a behind-the-scenes look at story gathering. This is really interesting here. These are live pictures from Avalon Street, where Mama Shu Harris has worked tirelessly to restore her city and her efforts getting national attention. Our Karen Drew has followed her work for years, and now we're telling her story from the eyes of those impacted by her efforts. Karen's been live in Highland Park since 6 a.m. Karen, you've met a lot of people today. There are a lot of people working to make Highland Park vibrant again. 
Oh, Kim, you put that really well. It is very true. They are working so hard in this community. We are on Avalon Street. You can see behind me the homework house. We were live there at 4 o'clock talking about the tutoring programs. Now we are at one of the many urban gardens that are in this community. Um, and they are using this to educate neighbors and also to feed the public. I'm going to catch up with Aziza right now, and she's been busy. You've been working all day, Aziza. I have. You have. This lettuce is amazing, right? Thank you. What's the key? Um, the compost yeah. and the love. Yeah, that's true. That's it. And you, you share this with the community. I do. Um, I just gave a bag of it away earlier. Mm -hmm. I made a giant salad for everyone today. I know. And um, I'm trying to give away some more. You going to take some I home? do want some, actually. Please. If, if you're OK to share. I don't want to take too much, but I want to test please, it out. Please, I have too much. OK, while you <laughs> are doing that, I want to toss this to a yeah. piece of some of the highlights of some of the things that we've covered today, some of the people we've met. It's been an amazing day so far. Yeah. It's more like a auntie, uncle kind of vibe. You know, of course you still have to watch out for your kids, but uh, it's really good to feel so neighborly. You know, the narrative has always been so negative. Right. And it's, <clears throat> it's nice to have opportunities to kind of like write the course a little bit. The Goddess Women's Marketplace is open here on Avalon Street and you come in and you can take a look at all the different things that they sell. It's for the community. I mean, if someone is hungry, I just gave out some letters and stuff to a brother that was just coming down the street. Just, it was very random. So every other week we want to give these things out to the community every day. I'm willing. In terms of Avalon Village and Mama Shu, uh, she's sure made a difference. Awesome. Yeah. She's awesome. If somebody doesn't know something about Highland Park, what should they know? Oh, it's good people here. Right? Good people. I see a great future for Hamilton. Uh, yeah. I think you all coined it the Hamilton Corridor. Yeah, I don't know and if that so, was something. But <laughs> hey, we're, we're going to take corridor. it. We're going to take right? it. Yes, yeah. yes. So the Hamilton Corridor, okay. uh, I think, um, is the next place uh, for, for food and beverage, for small business, for boutiques. Okay, what did we learn today and what can we do to uplift this community? What's next? I've talked to some folks already uh -huh. about very specific things that oh, we good. can do to help this city uh, move forward. And uh, I call this city the capital of Detroit. Ooh, I like <laughs> that. I, I like you know? that. Back here live in the capital of Detroit. I like how he phrased that. We are harvesting the lettuce, Aziza. Why do you think this is so important? This is just one aspect of the village in terms of helping folks out. Well, I think it's really important that we have fresh food that is not um, hours and hours on out or days and days on out, yeah. okay? We're going to eat this in a few minutes, so we're getting the full nutri nutrition of it all. And I think that it's really important that um, families, me as a mom, that's my main concern, my children, um, we are feeding our kids correctly, yeah. feeding them what they need to have on a day-to-day -day basis. I was going to say, and also educating the public, too, because sometimes people don't realize how important this is, all of this healthy food. You've got a garden here and right down the street. Yes, ma'am. And, and we're gonna we're gonna try some lettuce later. We are okay. It's going down. I, it's going down. It's going down. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> All right, we're gonna continue. We're live back here at six o'clock with some new programs that are going on here at Avalon Village. We're streaming live on Local Four Plus and click on Detroit.com. We're gonna send it back to you guys. Yeah. We're working on dinner. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so nice to shine a positive light on a city that has right. so many positive yeah. things going on. It really is. Much more to come from Karen here, but we've got more to come here at five. Let's check in with Rod.